The Soybean School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by Pride Seeds, Nodulator Pro, and Cruiser Max Vibrance Beans. So if you've been to the Southwest Agriculture Conference, uh, you know of the production pundits segment. That's where resident real ag- agriculture agronomist Peter Johnson spars with independent agronomist Pat Lynch about who's smarter. But the big point of my story around that is every year, uh, there's always at least two or three questions around what's the best herbicide program to use in IP soybeans or food grade non-GMO soybeans. And I'm sorry to tell you, there is not one magical herbicide that is always going to amazingly work awesome. But what I can tell you is there's some general principles that put us in the end of having good weed control every year versus not having good weed control. And so I'm here at the Allure Research Station where we have one of our uh, comparative trials where we look at 16 different herbicides and non-GMO soybeans. And here's a year where Uh, things look pretty amazing. So you can see here behind me is the plot. This is a herbicide treatment about uh, six feet is sprayed and you can see to the left there uh, the massive weed pressure that's there. So this is a soil applied herbicide. So that's kind of rule number one of IP soybeans is always put down a soil applied herbicide. Uh, This is the soybean school so we should remember that the most important part about weed competition and yield loss is weeds that come up uh, before or with the crop are the most impactful for yield. So if we lay down a soil applied herbicide, we can eliminate that early season competition. But you might say, well, if I don't get rain, that soil applied herbicide looks like crap. Uh, Yes, Uh, in our trials over the last 10 years, about six years out of 10, that soil applied herbicide does fail and we need to go back in and do something else. You're looking here, at the 40% of the time where the soil applied herbicide gets moisture for activation and it looks beautiful and it looks beautiful throughout the season. But more often than not, what happens is uh, we should be out there scouting about three weeks after the application of the soil applied herbicide. That's when we start to see that second flush of weeds or escapes and then we can hit that with a post-emergent herbicide. And when we do that, the combination of both pre and post-emergent herbicides We end up having great weed control, we minimize yield loss from weed competition, and we most importantly get our IP premium. So a soil applied herbicide applied before the crop emerges in IP soybeans is an absolute must. But as I mentioned before, about uh, 60% of the time, it doesn't provide season long control. There's later escapes and we need to address that with a post emergent herbicide. And you can see, here's an example where after three weeks, I did see the odd witchgrass coming up here. There's a couple of lambs quarters in there. Uh, I chose not to come back in, right? For the purposes of experimentation. Uh, now we're in you know, mid August and we're already starting to see those weeds coming above the canopy and come harvest time, it'll be a little bit dirty. So that's why we say come back with a post-emergent herbicide and be scouting three weeks after uh, that soil applied herbicide has been applied and then we'll have uh, optimized weed control in non-GMO IP soybeans.